It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. It is the Monday, December 19th edition of the show. Hopefully everybody's having a a wonderful, wonderful day, had a good weekend, etc. We are getting ready for, of course, Christmas. I am your host, Gary Seegers. Again, you can follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. We've got a lot to talk about today. I'm going to do a a shorter show than usual. Uh, I've got a new... Uh, a new audio board, so hopefully everything sounds good after this thing gets done. I, everything's tested okay, but regardless, uh, let me go on and start off by telling you that, of course, the show is brought to you each and every time out by BetUS. That is America's premier online sports book. And look, these guys, uh, fast, easy payouts and withdrawals, uh, tons of bonuses, live wagering. At, they got 24-7 personalized customer service. It, it's, it, it's a no-brainer. So if you sign up using the link in the description, you can go ahead and get a $50 free play with no deposit required. Now, it doesn't get much better than that. Go ahead and check them out. BetUS, it is where the game begins. And of course, I host the BetUS College Football Show. That's right. That's right. We've got that uh, every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure that you tune in tomorrow for part three of the bowl season. Wednesday will be part four. We have got a lot of games to go over. Uh, my analysis on the games will come out on Wednesday at like 6 p.m. Uh, Central Time. So make sure that you are tuned in here. If you've not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. Click the subscribe button. Hit the notification button. It lets you know when we go live. And of course, on top of that, uh, make sure that you like this video. That helps us out a ton. Now, let's go on and dive into some topics from over the weekend, etc. Just that news that's going on in the world of college football. Let's uh, let's take a look at this. Let's see what's actually happening here. The Sports Business Journal is predicting that the Pac-12 is going to go to Amazon. That their main package is all basically going to go streaming. They they might carve out a few big time games for I believe they said CBS etc. But this is you know one of the these guys are highly respected. They know exactly what they're talking about. They believe that the Pac-12 is going to take the money grab, and they're going to make sure that they get uh, as much money as possible for their schools there. Now, the question is, uh, what does that do as far as their reach, right, their audience reach? Because that's a, that's a big-time question. Uh, what does it look like when we get to that point? Because how many people are really going to be able to find you on Amazon Prime? Uh, yes, there's been a lot of people that are watching the NFL games, but we don't necessarily know exactly what it's going to look like with uh, college games for brands that are not as easily recognizable, right? The Thursday night football stuff, the audience has started to decline after that first game that was just you know a, a big-time novelty, but big brands, etc. You, you do still have... At least 8 million people watching an NFL game on Amazon every Thursday night, right? Uh, At this point, I don't know that the Pac-12 is going to be able to reach those kinds of numbers. And they weren't able to reach those kind of numbers with games on FS1 and ESPN2 and and whatever, right? There, There are some games that obviously will rate better than others. But what does it do for uh, your brand's reach as far as the university is concerned? If you're not going to go linear or at least the majority of your games linear, what does that do? And I guess this will be a good test case. Uh, but it is a, a scary situation for some of these schools because you're not sure exactly what that's going to do. And yes, there are a lot of people that are on Amazon or that have Amazon subscriptions. How many of them are on it regularly? How many of them go to that for their live viewing? And I don't believe it's a lot. Now, Amazon does have a new thing where they've got... Uh, basically a live TV guide. It could be very interesting, but this is uh, this is very interesting to see. You know, we all figured that the Pac-12 would eventually be the first to go uh, to a streaming giant eventually. I don't know that we assumed it would happen this quickly. And the reason it's it's needing to go this way is because Amazon is willing to pay more than ESPN and Fox, etc. So that's 
something to watch out for going forward. Um, we'll see exactly what ends up happening. Let's uh, let's go on and turn on let's turn on some tunes. Let's uh let's get a little a little mood music going in the background. Big Twelve expansion again. We got some things to discuss. Now, there is an article from Dennis Dodd back on December 16th that talked about Texas and Oklahoma joining the SEC. And that's that's certainly one thing uh, to pay attention to as we, as we go along. Uh, how are ESPN and Fox going to work this deal out? How are they going to make it happen where Oklahoma and Texas can go ahead and join the SEC in 2024 after the 2023 season so that everything's joined up when the SEC uh, new television contract begins on ABC and on ESPN, right? That's what they're really shooting for. And honestly, I don't think that the Big 12 would be super irritated by, by getting Texas and Oklahoma out a year early and going ahead and setting up things with their new TV deal, getting everything rolling the way that they should, it's it's something to watch for, right? Uh, now, one person, there's an industry source that told Dodd, he said, I don't see it happening. Um, and then another source said it's advanced, it's further along. It, it was going on long before Las Vegas, which is where Brett Yormark was talking about this, right? Um, and that was like first week of December. So... Uh, the interesting part of this Dennis Dodd article mentions that Texas and Oklahoma would owe the Big 12 a termination fee for leaving early. Now, what they're trying to do is, is settle it. They're trying to whittle this thing down. Uh, the contract states, any school departing early owes two years' worth of revenue. Using an average annual figure of $42 million, the Big 12 could reap as much as $168 million bucks if Texas and Oklahoma give notice to the league 18 months in advance. Now, that sum could be negotiated down depending on each side's willingness to get a deal done. Whatever monies are paid, here's the interesting part, could conceivably be used to fund Big 12 expansion, sources told CBS Sports. Uh, they said it also could be distributed to existing members. Now, it says the Pac-12 remains without a new media rights deal, with their prospects seemingly diminishing. The likes of Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah could potentially be lured to the Big 12. The idea would be to convince those schools that they could make more money in the Big 12. Now, it says the Big 12's new media rights deal announced in late October will guarantee league schools an all-in average figure of at least $48 million, including bowl revenue and NCAA tournament monies, sources indicated. Now, that's approximately $5 million more than the conference members are presently earning with Texas and Oklahoma. Now, the reason for that is, of course, because... Uh, the television market has completely changed since that last Big 12 deal was done. But either way. So we're looking at Colorado, Utah, Arizona, Arizona State. And it says they could be lured to the Big 12 in, with the idea being that they could make more money in the Big 12. That's only part of it, right? I think the biggest issue here is not only money. You want to you want to stay competitive, obviously. Uh, and schools like Colorado... Yeah, right now is a, is a good time for them because they've got a ton of hype. And if they are investing that much into their football program, then yeah, they're going to want to uh they're going to want to make sure that they are making money. The other issue is if the Pac-12 goes streaming only and this thing goes bust, do they really want to be part of that What's the what's the word I'm talking about? They do they really want to be a part of an experiment? That, that's that's the biggest question, right? Do they really want to be a part of something that might go belly up? That what happens if Amazon can't pay? Which I don't see that happening. What happens if Amazon does pay but nobody watches? What happens to the reach of their universities, their brands? What happens then? With the Big 12, you've got stability. You've got continuity. With the Pac-12, we've still got questions. And it's a lot of questions. But this was a very interesting article uh, by Dennis Dodd because it, it kind of tosses that part in the very back of it. But it, it still raises 
those questions. You know, Brett Mark, or your Mark was just talking about this in Vegas a couple of weeks ago about how they still want to expand out west. They want to get into that fourth time window. That that would be a way to do it. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I assumed that he was meaning somewhere in California, but you still got the same thing going on here. I'm I'm interested. Like I'm I'm interested to see what's going to happen. My prediction. I think it's going to take a little bit. Obviously, we need to see what exactly is brought to the table with Amazon, and see if these schools are willing to uh, do that experiment, right? Because I, I think the Big Twelve would be willing to do it right now, like as quickly as possible. And by right now, I mean within the next year or two. I don't mean like right this second. But uh, obviously, there's still a lot of stuff going on behind closed doors. There's still a lot of talks being had. So we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening with this. Moving along, Brian Newberry, the defensive coordinator at Navy, has been hired as the new Navy head coach. Now, there are all sorts of rumors going around. There's all sorts of, but it, let's let's look at it this way. It is a little bit weird that you fire the winningest coach in program history and you replace him with his defensive coordinator and a guy that's been there for basically a cup of coffee, right? Newberry has not been there for a long, long time. Uh, Newberry's defense was really, really good this year. Like that Navy defense was definitely good, especially towards the end of the season. I think you can look at it a couple of different ways. There's a lot of people that said that we kind of had a Kevin Steele situation going on here. And that is that Newberry was pushing for the job. He was, he was talking to the AD saying, Hey, we could be a lot better. I know how to fix this. You should give me the job. And he was doing this, you know, behind the scenes, behind the head coach's back. Okay. Like I, I could, I could maybe see that it's, it's not inconceivable that that stuff goes on. The other side of this is interesting to me. The, idea that Chet Gladchuk was in a he was he was in a power struggle with the head coach right because Gladchuk comes in and he fired Ivan Jasper and then Keen Nehemiah uh, Nehemiah gets him hired back on and it's this constant back and forth back and forth and you knew eventually it was going to come to a head and that's exactly what ended up happening so it, that's what I think was going on is Gladchuk already knew who he was going to hire last week when he told the press that the next guy that comes in is going to run the triple. You know, I thought it was crazy to pigeonhole yourself like that. But maybe it wasn't crazy considering he already knew he was going to hire, right? Like, that's that's what I'm looking at. So I look at this as Gladchuk hired somebody that he knew was not going to give him a power struggle that was going to be pretty easy to handle and that's what we've got. Like, Newberry is already on staff. He already knew what was going on. Uh, it's You just wanted to get away from Ken. It's not that you wanted to change systems. It's not that you wanted to change anything. You just wanted to get that out of the way. So we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, I guess it, it could be a good hire. I don't know that any of us really, really knows. But obviously, we will figure it out when we get there. Let's... uh. Let's go ahead and hit an ad really quickly. And then on the backside, we're going to talk Alabama for just a minute. We're going to talk Arkansas and their new uh, defense coordinator, new NCAA president. And we're going to talk a little bit of recruiting. Let's check out some things you should know about. College football is back. And BetUS TV has you covered. Every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we've got expert game analysis to help you make informed decisions before kickoff. Only on the BetUS TV College football channel. Visit winningcureseverything.com to find everything you need to know about us, including full shows in video or podcast form, gambling picks, merch, the gear we use, and more. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit betustv.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports show and, from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. 
visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now back to the show. All right. Now we have got some, some more interesting things to discuss. So back to the music. It has been reported that there will be no Alabama opt-outs for the Sugar Bowl. Now, we see opt-outs all over the bowl landscape. How does Alabama continue to do this? Apparently, Bryce Young is going to play. Will Anderson Jr. is going to play. I think the idea is here that you can sell them on, well, we were supposed to play in the SEC championship game, and we didn't get to. So this is one extra game, but really in the grand scheme of things, this is what you were supposed to be playing all along, right? A 13th game, That's it makes sense. Alabama routinely has players opt into playing bowl games even when they don't necessarily matter, right? We have seen this time and time again in the Citrus Bowl after the 2019 season. Uh, some of the players opted out. Some of them decided they wanted to come out and play and a lot of that had to do with the fact that uh, you kind of end the season in somewhat embarrassing fashion. You take some losses maybe you're not supposed to, etc. You want to leave the university with a good taste in your mouth. I think that's what he's selling here. So it does kind of change the prospect. I mean, we saw the line move from Alabama as a three-point favorite up to a six-and-a-half-point favorite against Kansas State in that game. Uh, I will tell you. Uh, as an Alabama fan, of course, uh, I was kind of looking forward to seeing, you know, maybe some Ty Simpson at quarterback, maybe seeing some different guys. Now, obviously, there's a lot of guys that have transferred out, right? JoJo Earl, uh, Treshawn Holden, etc. Like, there's a lot of guys that have transferred out of the program already. So you're going to get to see some new guys anyway. But the interesting part here is that these guys are, you know, First day NFL guys, top 10, top 15 NFL picks. And they want to go out on top. They want to go out uh, with a win. And they already did that in the Auburn game. But uh, but this is, this is interesting. The other part of this that's very, uh, I guess, something to question or something to just pay attention to. Does NIL change it where even top 10 NFL guys don't have to leave yet? Because there's been a lot of talk about the idea that, you know, Bryce Young could come back and make, you know, $5 million. Now, if he stays another year, that's a year that he doesn't get to work towards that second NFL contract, which is the big one. That's the the big time moneymaker. But if you, I mean, say you make $5 million bucks or or more for one season to come back to play football. Yeah. You know, it, it, that ain't bad. That that really ain't bad at all. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the motivation is. I don't know what the what the selling is. And so I, I'm curious to see if that's something that ends up going on uh, going forward. So we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, so we got we got that. We got Alabama out of the way. Let's uh, let's look at Arkansas really quickly. Arkansas hired Central Florida defense coordinator Travis Williams as their new DC. Now, I I think it's a good hire for Arkansas. I think uh, Travis Williams, a good recruiter, obviously. I think think this team is really interesting. Um, So it's not like there's not talent at Arkansas. They just were not able to uh, get things done. So looking at Williams' bio, uh, He was the co-defensive coordinator at Auburn in 2019 and 2020. He was the Auburn linebacker coach. He played at Auburn. He uh, he played for the Falcons for one season, but uh, but he was a GA at Auburn in 2009. uh, Linebackers coach at Northern Iowa. Then he was the DC at Creekside High School, and uh, that's in Fairburn, Georgia. Then he goes to Auburn as a DA. uh, That's a defensive analyst. Auburn as a linebackers coach. Auburn as a co-DC and linebackers coach. UCF as a DC. Now he's going to Arkansas. I, this is certainly good for him to get out of uh, the whole Auburn and Gus Malzahn tree. Extend out. 
right? Do something a little bit different. Uh, I'm, I'm real curious how this is going to look. Um, because when you've, when you've only done one thing for so long, you don't know if it's him or if it's the program or if it is the head coach that he's working under, etc. There's just a lot of questions. But Travis Williams' defense has actually been pretty good at UCF this season. Um, not great towards the end of the season, but they were able to recruit some big-time guys to UCF. I imagine he will do the same here. Just did something to pay attention to. Good get by Arkansas. Good get by Sam Pittman going a little bit of a different direction than they went before with Barry Odom. Uh, this could certainly work out. I I'm curious to see what this defense looks like. The NCAA has a new president, Charlie Baker, the current sitting uh, Massachusetts governor. And I'm, I'm real interested in this. Uh, now, he, he is going out of office, I believe, on January 5th. So this is just going to be his next lineup. He's a Republican in a very blue state. This is, I, I guess, the first question is, why would you want the job of the NCAA? And, and I would guess that money probably plays a part. Like, Mark Emmert was getting a ton of money. But with the role of the NCAA changing, do you really know what you are running into? What are you stepping into as the new president? What is your role in that organization? Because all of your teeth have been taken away. You don't really have a lot of enforcement power right now. So I'm, I'm curious what this is going to look like with him at, in the fold. And it does kind of irritate me because it, I, I personally thought that it would be better to not have as much government regulation inside of college athletics and yet here we are the the head of the ncaa is now going to be a former governor a former politician and of course he's got all the accolades he played sports at harvard or whatever it was north who knows but this is this is strange this is strange to see exactly what we're doing um Baker told Dennis Dodd over at CBS Sports, he said, uh, I think the challenges, or I certainly think the challenges here are significant. Um, yeah, understatement, of course. Um, Baker has got some things that he's he's got to figure out uh, because he's coming into a completely different world. He has no collegiate administration on his resume at all. I'm curious about the experience. So we'll we'll see. Like, it, how is he able to get along with everybody? How is he going to change what the role of the NCAA is? And we'll see. We will we will certainly see. Can he get things done? Because nobody at the NCAA has been able to get anything done beforehand. Uh, it's just a, a disaster. And so, uh, let's see. It's worth taking a shot at different leaders with different ideas. Uh, Warren keeps calling himself a disruptor publicly bent on further expanding his conference that's already snatched up USC and UCLA. Cleofkoff uh, must think on his feet. Um, it says Baker has to get along with those Power 5 commissioners as true power brokers. They are the ones who are going to decide if they break away from the NCAA or not. Like They are the ones whose conferences are going to be making more combined than the NCAA annual budget when the new expanded college football playoff comes online. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing. The power's with the commissioners, not the NCAA president. So what is this guy's job going to be? I know that I'm rambling at this point, but this is a very interesting hire. And I just, I, when I came on to talk about this right now, I still have not made up my mind on exactly what this is going to be or even what I think about it. And I don't know that anybody can have a well-formed opinion until this guy gets in the job and we see exactly what he's going to do. So we shall see. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the recruiting and transfer and blah, blah, blah stuff that's going on here. We'll start with this one. UCLA has flipped five-star quarterback Dante Moore from Oregon, and Moore it says that he is now going to attend uh, UCLA. He's going to be a Bruin. Now, that's interesting because Colin Schley, the transfer quarterback from Kent State, uh, just announced a couple of days ago that he is going to UCLA as well. Now, I wouldn't imagine that Dante Moore thought that he was going to start day one at UCLA. But it is interesting that Dante Moore 
maybe was uh, put off by the fact that Bo Nix is staying at Oregon, so he knew he wasn't going to play there. I think he's still got a chance to beat out Schley at, at UCLA. But that's a very interesting quarterback room now because obviously they're losing Dorian Thompson Robinson. UCLA, they just they continue to get a little bit better, a little bit better. This is the highest ranked quarterback that they will have ever had signed with them uh, in, in modern recruiting rankings. I mean, that's insane. That's, that's crazy. Chip Kelly, finally, finally, the fruits are coming to bear with, uh, with old Chip Kelly. I, I can't wait to see what actually happens on signing day. I can't wait. Uh, let's talk about Ohio State for a second. Five-star quarterback Dylan Rayola uh, decommitted from Ohio State last week, or no, just a couple of days ago. Uh, his uncle, Donovan Rayola, is the offensive line coach at Nebraska. Hmm, right? Makes you question a few things. Uh, it, Matt Rule knew what he was doing, right? Like, that's, can, can we say that? Matt Rule was pretty smart with this. He knew what was going on here, and he said, you know what, for us to be good, we got to have a good quarterback. And not a not a transfer, not a not somebody that, that couldn't win the job wherever they were. We need a dynamic, dynamite quarterback. Uh, Dylan Rayola, by the way, is the number one player in the 2024 class. So this is a little ways down the line. Uh, the, the comment was, we have a lot of respect for Coach Day and the Ohio State program, uh, said Donovan Rayola. Uh, everything is back on the table. His process is almost like it's restarting. It's not closed off to anybody. Th these are the offers that the kid has. Ohio State, Georgia, USC, Oregon, and now Nebraska. And so those were those were his top choices. Um, I. What's interesting is that Matt Rule, of course, brought in uh, Donovan Rayola to be his offensive line coach. Like... <laughs> Oh man, or not not brought in? Excuse me, it, it retained him. But you you get the point. Like he he did the math. He understood. Hey, I could bring in a different offensive line coach, but would anybody else uh, be the uncle of the number one player in the next in the next recruiting class? Probably not. Uh, and so I'm I'm interested in this to see what's going to happen here because hey, Matt Rule get this thing turned around really quickly. That could certainly be a good thing. All right. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. I appreciate all of you. Of course, uh, go check out Flow Sports. There is a link in the description for that. They've got over 25,000 different sporting matches over there, uh, including D3 football, etc. So go and check them out. And, uh, and yes, go and check out Valtimary Surf Company. It's Collegiate Town Apparel Line. Uh, these guys are phenomenal. The clothing is super soft. The material is incredibly comfortable, and the design's really, really cool. You can check them out, valtimarysurfco.com. Use the promo code GARY10, that is G-A-R-Y-10, and you'll get 10% off of your order. So go and check those out. Uh, there are links in the description for both of those. There's also the link in the description for BetUS. You get a $50 free play, no deposit required. Just have to sign up using that link below. So go ahead and check that out. And, uh, of course... Check out winningcureseverything.com. That's the website. Make sure that you have subscribed to the podcast if you've not done so already. If you are uh, watching on YouTube, make sure that you are subscribed there and make sure that you hit that like button. With that said, I think it's time for us to get out of here. Again, you guys take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully, hopefully, all your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.